What's up, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Falcons Final Whistle Podcast. I'm Scott Baer. Inside the Atlanta Falcons headquarters in Flowery yeah, Branch. Yeah, we're yes, back, people. Back, back together. Yeah, Got we my omelet this morning. It was, <laughs> it was good. <laughs> no joke, guys. The Atlanta Falcons cafeteria, legit. Fan. Food services, they know what they're doing. We had some queso today for lunch. A f- full epic fiesta, really. Fajitas. Yeah. I, yeah. I know you all Basically, came on yeah. to listen to us talk about queso, but, yeah, you and, know. And we're back off the rails in one minute again. <laughs> God, that like was 30 a, seconds. <laughs> it's like a tradition, but nonetheless, it, it was Chris this time. It was. It was me. He started talking about fancy food, and it was delicious. Uh, enjoyed it. Anyway, uh, we didn't come on just to give you a food review. I could. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, and they'd get several stars, probably five. But nonetheless, um, we, we are here to talk about the news of the week, yeah. really. The, uh, what happened on Monday afternoon that Falcons wide receiver Calvin Ridley has been suspended indefinitely, at least through the 2022 season, for violating the NFL's gambling policy. Nonetheless, he's going to be unavailable to the Falcons for the 2022 season. And that's what the focus of this podcast is going to be. We already know what happened. Now, the discussion is, what happens next? How does this impact the Falcons? How has it impacted the Falcons? Um, it's been a crazy turn of events. For how long have has Calvin Ridley been the topic of, are they going to trade him or are they not going to uh, trade him? Now, they're obviously definitely not going to, to trade him. And uh, they're left with uh, somebody who is still with the team, but again, uh, suspended and unavailable uh, to the team going into 2022. It all happened in a whirlwind, Tori. Right? Yeah. Uh, you know, over the course of a Monday afternoon, maybe it broke the internet. I don't know. It definitely felt that it, way because we're in this little microcosm. Yeah. Right. Also, I just hit my head on the back of a, a cabinet. So no if, more I start, caffeine if I for start Tori. talking crazy, that's crazy. That's it. But no, I went into yesterday thinking we're recording this podcast on Tuesday. So the Correct. Calvin stuff happened yeah. on Monday. I went into Monday thinking that I'm coming back from the combine. I'm going to eat healthy, maybe <laughs> eat something green, like a salad, maybe. And I, the Calvin news drops and breaks and I end up eating a pint of ice cream for lunch. <laughs> Shout out Ben and Jerry's milk and cookies sponsor me at Tori underscore McElhaney. Yes, um, yes. But no, on a serious note, this was really, really big news in terms of where the Falcons are at this point in the 2022 offseason and where they're going. Um, Just kind of looking at the salary cap, which is something that I've been looking at, gosh, every single day for the last month and a half. Um, The main thing you need to know about how this affects the cap is that Calvin Ridley was on the books for $11.1 million in 2022. That was his cap hit. And essentially, with him suspended for the 2022 season, that money tolls, which ultimately means that that 11.1 million dollars is off of the Falcons books so if you were to go on places like over the cap or spot rack right now whereas the Falcons before this news broke were seven million dollars over the cap they now have 3.375 million in cap space and we've got a week until the start of the league year and that's kind of where they are and how this has um, changed things for them just in in that scope if we're just talking money and in terms of the uncertainty at the wide receiver spot it was always there right Chris there were, weren't very many guys under contract you wouldn't know if Calvin was going to be here or not in terms of the the trade speculation that was going all over the place but receiver is uh there aren't very many under contract at this <laughs> point no yeah the the receiving core is in dire need it's barren and Tory's story actually just made me remember that Forgot to take my chicken breast out the freezer, but you know that's I guess that's a story for a different day for dinner tonight. I'm just kind of kicking myself right now. I don't know what I'm going to for dinner, but let's stay on topic. But <laughs> I mean, I could let's get off topic. And and then let's go back. back. I just had to say that out loud because I was kicking myself. But <laughs> yeah, the, the Falcons only have Frank Darby on con- on contract next year as a pass catcher, who, as a guy who caught a pass in 2021. They have Alameda Alameda Zacchaeus, who's a restricted free agent, and um, as you know, restricted meaning, you know, you give him a tender and he was undrafted. So the, the uh, Scott pointed to me yesterday in my story uh, that when when you're an undrafted free agent, you can you can do the tender for the original round, but you wouldn't get any compensation if uh, Zacchaeus is signed. And then there are a couple guys who the Falcons signed to futures contracts who have had who one who's had a stint in the NFL and uh, others who others who 
played on special teams and another in the Canadian football football league. So it's safe to say the Falcons receiving core is <laughs> – It looks very different, different than, what, than it what it did two and a half, three yes, years and ago. It, and, it, and it might be, you know, right now as it looks among the, the bottom of the, the bottom of the league in terms of looks the players. quite like, barren. Quite barren. <laughs> quite not good. <laughs> right. But yeah. I think the – I think the way to look at it too is is kind of like, regardless of of what happened with with Calvin's situation, there were always reports that that he might have been on the way out. At right. Regardless, so yeah, y- you would think that the that Arthur Smith and Terry Fontenot were prepared for the possibility of him yeah. not being here, not right. in this situation, but the possibility of not being here. So while the receiver room was completely different, like we said, it's barren. Ops- it might be the worst in the league at the at the moment. They have a lot of time to figure things out. They do. But and, it, and hopefully we'll have a bit of cap space to do it with. You know, if you think yeah. you can extend the right guys, restructure the right guys, you hope that you have that kind of money to be able to rebuild it the way you want to, at least over the course of the next two years. Right. And th- Yep, for sure. And I don't want to go into what we might get in later, but yeah. 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 So we're going to, over the course of this podcast, we're going to kind of go over how the Calvin Ridley news – changes the outlook of the 2022 offseason, whether it does or not, um, what this might mean for the possibility of Russell Gage returning to the Falcons, increase, decrease, remain the same, and in light of the news, how high are you drafting wide receiver? Uh, there's some mock drafts out there that think number eight could be used on a pass catcher. The Falcons have used pass, uh, the first-round draft picks on pass catchers quite a few times. Yeah. They've landed a lot of pretty talented guys. Yep. I mean, haven't really missed. Ha- haven't yeah, really ha- missed. Yeah. Really it's missed. a long it, – it's almost the opposite of pass rusher, it seems, lately. It, yeah, they, a it's good point. A, a bunch of uh, star quality type of guys. But anyway, we are going to get into all those topics. But b- before we do, a big thank you to our sponsor, Microsoft Windows 11, the official operating system of the NFL and the Atlanta Falcons. The all-new Windows 11 is here to bring you closer to what you love, including amazing, super-duper awesome sauce podcasts <laughs> like this one. Atlanta Falcons final whistle. Learn all about the awesome new features of Windows 11 at windows.com. So let's dive into the first topic, and it's the most general of all of them. How does this change the outlook of the 2022 offseason, or does it? Maybe that's another amendment. Dory? Yeah. yeah. No. Uh, first off, the way you said, so this question's a little general. So right at Tori's question. Right at no. Dagger, dagger to the heart, Scott. I <laughs> think it's a good broad question to launch okay. this conversation. The the use it was a compliment. <laughs> I don't know, maybe, maybe it was backhanded. It's, it's, it's tough to tell. It, it, here's the thing, Chris <laughs> I, I and feel I. What you're saying. Yeah. I, I, oh, I saw the look. Yeah, I knew it. We looked at the same. Thing. I was like, oh, <laughs> like, okay. dang, okay, Scott, coming after my question. It's I'm, fine. I'm trying to get you in a good argumentative place. Okay, that is true. Scott and I are gonna fight on a po- on a podcast sooner or later. Uh-huh. Um, I keep trying to provoke you and you just won't take he does bait. he does keep trying to provoke me um he was like just trash talk me a little bit and i'm like i i don't operate like that i let my work do the trash talk <laughs> 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 any just simple who, mic drop yeah <laughs> anywho okay so if you're looking at like how this idea of calvin th- this calvin situation uh changes the outlook of the 2022 offseason which is the general question that i wrote <laughs> um <laughs> I think there are two schools of thought here. I think there's one school of thought here where you're like, okay, it's really not that bad. Kind of going back to what Chris was saying, you already knew going into this 2022 offseason that regardless of what was going to happen with Calvin Ridley, you had to bring in wide receivers to a certain degree. And and we know that the – we've talked about this before, the Yak Bros. Like, we've, we've been talking on this podcast and in these roundtables how the Falcons need some guys who can – just run over some people. And so you're already thinking that this organization is already out on the ground, whether it's at the combine or talking when we, when we get to free agency, talking to free agents who kind of fit this mold of rebuilding this wide receiver room. A- and then you also think about, well, okay, well, Calvin Ridley provided you cap relief. You know, you have $11.1 million that's now off the books. And that, I mean, that's going to help you regardless. The other school of thought here is that, oh my gosh, it sucks because you do not get draft capital from what's going on with Calvin Ridley right now. I fully believe that if there was a trade set up for Calvin Ridley that he would be worth, I definitely think, a second-round pick. I think a team would have been been willing to take Calvin Ridley and give up a second-round pick for him. That is off the table now. And so it's like, 
at the exact same time of saying like, oh, you got the cap relief. The Falcons were already in this position where they were looking for wide receivers. At the exact same time, it's like, but you could have had all of that and draft capital, which at this point in time is really important to this organization. It's gold. Right. It it, it is. And I think that that's the – if if you're looking at how um what what changes is that they might have lost a third second round pick mm-hmm. right and that's a major factor considering they already have whatever three in the top 58 four in the top 70 ish or something yeah. like that adding another person that that could possibly step in and make an immediate impact or help flesh out th- this depth chart with that many high picks you you could go twice at wide receiver you could go twice at, at edge rush right I think that that is a major loss with this turn of events right yeah. because we didn't know if, if he was going to come back but losing that asset especially when it was it was very possible that they could have either ended up with a, a valuable trade asset or as last time that we talked about Calvin I said then an excellent football player yeah. among all everything exactly. the uncertainty and the, and, the, and the speculation a guy who is a real talent. So from that side of it, it's a disappointment that through all of this, the Falcons won't get anything additional from it outside of the cap relief. Now the cap relief isn't nothing because they're now cap compliant at least, right. and there's still moves to be made. But uh, I think if you're the Falcons, this kind of, it was, everything was out of their control. He was not on this team. He was on a non-football injury. And uh, that is the, uh, that's the loss that you couldn't really factor into this whole thing. Yeah, I guess I'm I'm wondering in terms of of their outlook is like how are they going to look to rebuild the the wide receiving core because like you said Calvin is not like Calvin is really good, really good. <laughs> Calvin right. is a hard to hard to. It's not a long list of guys better than 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 playing receiver yeah. than than Calvin Ridley or Julio yeah. before him, right? Or Julio before him. So, are you looking to? sign someone in in free agency are you looking to to build through the draft and I think like you mentioned with with Calvin before too with the second round pick I think I think even uh you you see the the for example the Eagles for example have three first round picks this year and one of their first round picks is because Carson Wentz played 75 percent of his snaps yep the Falcons could have very likely been in a situation where they they traded Calvin for a second round pick that could have turned into a first based off of playing time because of this year so it even could have became that so it's really it's really a you know hurt hurts you on that sense too and also I think it hurts you because when you come back to 2023 and let's say Calvin Ridley gets reinstated in 2023 and he's back on the books for 11.1 million in 2023 and you have that fifth year option still intact if the Falcons want to hit the trade market with Calvin as a candidate I don't know if you're getting the the same of what I doubt you're getting the same offers as what you would at this point in time right yeah and I and I think my my thought too is having that that guy that Lamborghini that uh, that Lee Smith told me Love about it. that I always talk about having that number one guy who draws attention from from Kyle who helps who helps your running game that guy out there that forces defenses to think twice about how they play you who that's my thought who is going to be that guy I don't know if that guy can be like a Russell Gage if, right. if he is that guy that makes defense think twice about what they're doing. Um, in, in coverage, maybe he he can become that guy. Maybe other people think he is, but is that going to be through the draft? Or yeah, are you going to try to get a young guy through the draft, or maybe sign one? That that's how I look at it. Mm-hmm. Like, what are they going to do there? It's and it's tough because while there are Jamar Chase is a great example of somebody that can step in and wow right away, and Justin Jefferson is another one. That's not altogether frequent. That's pretty rare to get somebody who can come in and be the game changer, a Kyle Pitts type of player. That that doesn't always happen, even with the good ones. So can you be reliant on a rookie um, to come in and be somebody who can take legitimate, who's respected enough to take legitimate pressure off of Kyle Pitts? And so, yeah, there's a lot of factors in there. Um, and I think, but in terms of it radically changing, that Monday radically changed the Falcons' outlook, I no. As much as I want to debate, I don't think that we can here. It's, nah. it's not a complete paradigm shift no. or whatever. Yeah. So it's just a matter of how they restock this wide receiver core, what they do with that extra space. $11 million could be not one uh, receiver, but two. Um, just as we kind of transitioned here, we were recording this on a Tuesday afternoon. There's been a lot of activity in the receiver market in that Chris Godwin and – 
Devontae Adams have been tagged. Mike Williams has been signed to the tune of three for 60, 40-ish guaranteed. Not like the Falcons were going to be in play for those players, but what it does is Mike Williams establishes a – the market and an early market you take two a players maybe you didn't expect them to be on the market anyway but the market keeps shrinking right, right. so those next tier players just got a little bit more valuable mm-hmm. is is all i'm trying to say so when when you're trying to find that guy in free agency this person that we're talking about you know it gets a little complicated and is just re-signing russell gage is that the answer so the next question is does this change the desire or the need to re-sign Russell Gage? Um, I'll say it does, and here's why. If they go into next offseason with nobody except Frank Darby who has any experience in the system, no one to teach other people, whether it's a veteran import or a young draft pick, nobody to explain it, the intricacies of it. Now, everybody just learned the offense last year, so it's possible, but I'm just saying that I feel like that's a little bit of a setback because receiver is complicated. Arthur Smith moves, moves people everywhere. Russ could be that that type of player to at least be that peer who can lead this position group, lead this um, – because there's a new, you know, that uh, I just think that that would be a, a pro to signing him back. Mm-hmm. He's a really good third down receiver. So in terms of trust, you Matt Ryan trusts him. He goes to Russ on third down a lot. At the same time, is he like a straight up yak bro? It, it, does he maybe fit a mold of what you think of when you think of A.J. Brown or you think of some of the physicality that the Titans played with under Arthur Smith? I don't know. But that's that's my vote for why. I think it's more important to sign him than it was yesterday. Yeah. No, I I agree that it does change your outlook, and I think it puts more weight on on that decision of what you do with Russell Gage. I also think, just to throw another curveball in there, I also think that it changes the way that you view Cordero Patterson as a free agent. I think you look at both the situation of Cordero Patterson and Russell Gage, and you're like – in the exact same breath, kind of being like, these are two guys that meant a lot to our offense last year. The market value is not going to be astronomically high, and we can make this work. If you're the Falcons, like, I don't see why not. Um, And I I even was just thinking, I think it honestly, for me, even though you're looking at a wide receiver room, we know the impact that Cordero Patterson had on this offensive unit He's a pass catcher, too. And I I think that both of those guys, it almost enhances their chances of being brought back when you have, one, some cap relief, and two, your wide receiver number one from training camp 2021 is no longer around. And I I don't know. I do think it changes the outlook of both of them. I really do. Yeah, I, I, I think it I think it changes it. And, and I think all the, the reasons that you point out are valid in terms of having a guy in there who knows the system and understands the locker room and, shoot, understands what's good in the, in the food mm-hmm. court or things like that. But, I mean, I think at the end of the day, you know, it's the NFL. So right. you, can, you can bring someone in here who's going to gonna adjust to a new yeah. system, who can, who can play – who can play here? Who can adjust? It's, it's mm-hmm. they're professionals. Yeah, I, I, I do. I just think with with Russ, I think it comes down to what do you value more? Is it do you value the trust factor? Do you value or do you want to just clean house <laughs> and try to bring in guys that you want? Yeah, guys that yeah. You want? This is an opportunity where you could say right now we're just gonna clean house yeah. and bring in all all guys that we want. I think, I, I, I think it depends on where they see Russ's talent. Like I how agree. They, how, they, how good do they think Russell Gage is? And if they think on. that it can be replicated. Like, do you think that you can replicate Russell Gage's production right. with somebody who's cheaper? Yeah. I personally think you can. It, like, I think you can go out and find someone who can do what he did. Yeah, it's, it's a matter of where his market value sits. And for as much as we're talking about that some – that there are difficulties in reshaping this position group. There are also opportunities here that they don't have any contractual burdens um, from the previous regime about what type of receivers that that group liked versus this group. So you can go out and you can get maybe some mid-level guys. You can take, they're not going to spend that $11 million from Ridley on two wideouts, but you can split it in half and get two quality players. Or, right, you can go use that money on somebody that better fits your system. And to that point, you think, all right, well, if, if, if they're going to clean house and they're going to start fresh, then I how many times have I said Emmanuel Sanders on these podcasts? But, <laughs> I, but I think a, like a, a player like that right. who can come in and 
a steady, a room, you know, a, a, a good, you know, kind of culture fit who can establish and set a, a tone, even if he's not going to catch 1,100 yards. Um, I think all those things are interesting. So my first thought, and I still kind of stand by it, is, hey, look, Rusk has a lot of uh, pluses there, but I, I do see Chris's point too that it's a really unique, you know, that you can go out and get guys of skill sets that you want, mm -hmm. right? And kind of start over in that and regard. It, and, and, I'm, and also, I'm not trying to say that maybe they don't want Russ. He might right. be a guy that they do like. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. But again, this is an opportunity to do that. Yeah. yeah. So These are all hypothetical yeah, conversations. Right. Yeah. For sure. So uh, another hypothetical here is that. Here we go. When, <laughs> when you have transition. Transition. <laughs> I'm just going to say that. Right, moment. yeah, just transition. Tra transition. Yeah. Uh, That's what Scott puts in my articles when I need to transition. <laughs> <laughs> he just writes in all caps, transition. Transition. <laughs> uh, when you look at um, the NFL draft Ooh. and what they might do there, I think it's pretty obvious they're going to draft somebody, right? Uh, well, but you would hope, wouldn't you? you? A player? <laughs> <laughs> draft a <laughs> player. Okay, let me draft Chris Rim with the <laughs> number eight <laughs> overall pick. I have a here. real <laughs> – <laughs> I have a real problem just in my general life of talking about things that I'm thinking about in my head and I clue no one into what's going on. <laughs> this I, is true. I just did that. Sometimes uh, Scott just starts talking and I'm like, I don't know. I have no earthly idea where you're knows at, bro. what's going on. Well, let's get more specific. At number eight overall, increase, decrease, remain the same, uh, taking a wide receiver at that spot. I don't think it changes right. much of anything in terms of – I mean, I'm still team uh, taking a cornerback. And oh, I, I, that is, I am, after going to the Combine, I feel good about taking a cornerback Who? at number eight. I like Sauce. Sauce. Yeah. I, I like I Sauce. Know, I'm not sure if he's going to be there. I know. I don't think he's going to be there after the Combine. Yeah. That's the problem. So, yeah. if Sauce isn't there, I know, uh, I just recently read uh, The Athletics, Dane uh, Brugler's uh, number, th his third mock draft, and he had Kyle Hamilton going oh. to the Falcons at number eight. But he did add a sentence at the end where he said that uh, at number eight, he could also see Ohio State's Garrett Wilson making a lot of sense yeah. for the Falcons. And it's like, okay, that's interesting too. But I'm, I'm not, I'm, I can't get past, like, I can't look at the first round of this draft and not go defense for the Falcons. I just can't, um, yeah. as as I think we've talked about before in other well, I, I, other I ideas. Think it's, I think the Falcons have four picks in the top 75. Mm -hmm. So you got eight, was it 43, 58, 74, I think. And so I think you can come out of that and you can get – You can get a good receiver in that in those four picks. Not even just receiver. I, I think uh, most mock drafts have – like. Eight to nine edge rushers or yeah. linebackers in the top uh, in their top, in their first thirty two for and not all those guys are going to go mm -hmm. first no. round. So you might get some of those guys. Sex. So if you want to go receiver, if you want to go, if you want to go edge rusher, I don't know about I quarterback. I wouldn't. I don't know, I know if quarterback yeah. goes that deep. But if you go receiver or edge rusher, I'm. Th I think you could. You know, T Higgins was drafted in, in the second round. Mm -hmm. I think you can get. You can get, especially you saw. What nine guys run sub four four? Yeah, you know, right. these guys are. This is a good crop of of receivers. Mm -hmm. So they're deep. But I do think that when you look at someone, we've got to talk about Yak Bros mm -hmm. and something like that. You look at Traylon Burks. It's like mm -hmm. this is a. This seems like a Yak Bro. Yeah. Like, <laughs> also, you got to think about it too. How keen are the Falcons on moving up or moving down? Right. You yeah, know, yeah, like right. if they need more capital, or they want, or they have a guy that they know they want. Who's to say they don't move up or yeah. move down? Or move into the s first round. First round with those mm -hmm. picks. Yeah, for a, for a second for, for time. For a second, yeah. Especially because if they're in the late 20s, let's say Burks is, I don't know, somehow floating around right. there. Yeah. And they can get in the late 20s. That, that team is really only dropping a few picks because the Falcons yeah. have a relatively early second round pick, plus picking up something else of, of, of great value. Right. I'm always of the belief that when you're in this position as a roster, you want as many swings yes. as possible. I agree. But – it's but just an option. It's just it's it's, it's an option that yeah. having these assets gets going back to the looping back to the start of this thing, man. And like an, yet another asset would have been obviously beneficial here. Yeah. Um, I, just, I just think this is in general the the draft for the Falcons right now is uh, not a position that I think <laughs> most people would would it be like right the situation that they're yeah, in is, nah. a, is a difficult position. Like what 
even as I'm talking about it, I'm, I say one thing and I'm thinking like, well, well I, I, I don't go any other way. Go any That's other the thing way. is there are so many anything. freaking needs on this 2022 yeah. roster. They have so many needs that it's like you could go any which way, shape or form. And I'm like, OK, there's a solid argument for doing that. Exactly. So I don't know. I mean, I I think me personally right now, as I'm sitting here, I would say no to drafting a receiver at number eight. But I'm not saying no to drafting a receiver with either of those two second round picks. Right. Right. Or or going up, you know, and or getting one late. Yeah. Yeah. Or moving on the draft board to mm-hmm. get what you want. I, uh, with with this Russell Wilson to Denver news, I think it makes the this is more draft talk, but it makes that number eight spot in terms of trading down because before you'd want to get above Denver to get right. a quarterback. Uh, now that, they have theirs. That need isn't quite as strong anymore. But that's a topic for another podcast. <laughs> We're gonna have quite a few of these. Moving forward, so we head towards free agency and the draft. Um, so, you know, stay tuned. Uh, rate, review, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And we will talk to you guys. Gosh, the next time we do it, it's going to be knocking on free agency's door. Yeah, that, be that'll that be what we talk about, I'm sure, all of next pod. Yeah, man. Uh, talk to you guys next week. <laughs> <laughs>